It's Tuesday here at Le Mans and to be honest it's a very quiet day. I don't think I've ever spent any time at the track much on a Tuesday. It's it's a day of preparation but the teams are really all prepared before they turn up obviously especially the big ones. The drivers will I've seen a few of them cycling around. Some of the crazy ones actually run this track. They do triathlons and stuff so that's a pretty easy feat. Actually back in the day Jackie Hicks used to run the circuit on the Friday before the race and it really used to piss dad off because he thought he'd be too tired by the time race day came around. Not the case as was obviously uh, showed by the number of victories they had. Anyway I thought what I'd do is make the most of being uh, uh, the track being quiet and maybe try and walk drive as much of it as we can and obviously you'll recognize this because I will be standing right there at the head of the field come Saturday afternoon live on Fox Sports 2 when you're actually going to see me do the open of the show and it's just so incredible all the fans those grandstands are full and it's the I mean 300,000 people or something all locked into this track all watching all the nationality flags and things all the cars on the grid many many millions of equipment but right now it's just me and an empty track so let's go and have a little look but I'll tell you what when you start a lap round here at Le Mans this opening corner with this gladi gladiatorial amphitheater sort of, of spectators all watching you you're aware that you're about to start a lap on literally uh, one of the most iconic famous tracks in the world so let's see how far we get it's this way Now you know how in golf you have to avoid the sand traps? Well in racing you have to avoid the gravel traps and while that French tractor driver is beautifully manicuring the inside of the chicane here just guaranteed someone in an overtaking maneuver will end up on the inside it's not the place to do but uh, we're sneaking up right now to the Dunlop Bridge so this is an iconic piece of Le Mans history. Now as you come sweeping through turn one it's so fast and it allows the prototypes really to take a wide outside line or a, uh, a fast running GT car against one of the GTD category cars or GTM as it is here and they come sweeping around here but actually it's such a high speed moment filled it, fil sort of filtering its way down to this very very tight left hander. You watch it on TV and it looks as though it's got some flow but look at it here it's really bloody tight and of course we see people touch each other here what a way to start a lap at Le Mans but this is what I also want you to look at this is very important these storm drains we have seen rain like you had never believed over the last few years this year I think the weather's going to be good fingers crossed but this when I race here there was none of this expanse of asphalt it looks a bit like Kota doesn't it you've got this extra space here most needed because in the end you know if you stop out on the track at Le Mans and you can't get back to the pits under your own what do they call it reconnaissance recognizance I don't know then you are stuffed you're done you're done for the race so this is a very very Im, uh, important they want you to continue in the race they don't want you to be scuppered um, but it's a good place to to obviously get penalized if you shortcut the track and there's some nasty bumps on the inside but you're starting a lap at Le Mans guys So the Dunlop Bridge, very iconic, but for decades it also signified something else to fans of the track, which was of course the fairground was here. Now, we used to convince my mum, my sister Melanie and I, when dad was racing, to bring us out here. But I tell you what, back in the day, that was a bit of a den of iniquity. You used to be able to go and see the freak shows at the fairground. You could see the world's fattest lady, the three-headed baby, and the four, I think it was a five-legged goat or something. Anyway, as kids, we were fascinated, slightly appalled, but it definitely seared a memory deep into this little British brain. But it was also great because I think they had a brothel, which obviously, I was young, didn't mean so much to me then, but what could be better? Racing, race cars, and a French brothel. Actually, it could sound sort of disgusting, doesn't it? Anyway, that used to be there. The Ferris wheel used to be in that part, and it was a pretty dodgy spot to be. They cleaned it up, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I still think people go wandering around there drunk looking for the action. But the action's right here. So you come sweeping up over the top of the brow here under the bridge, and I've actually never raced this new section here. It wasn't around. 10 years ago when I last did the race but of course made famous by Alan McNeish in that horrific accident when literally there was only the tub of the Audi left when he went over the barrier there on the left hand side and it's just you can see one of the 
BMW race control cars going around checking out the track. I think it's their way of doing many, many fun free laps. Uh, but this section sweeping down through here, it's the first real taste of high speed, high downforce driving that the drivers get as they start this lap. And uh, it must be very exhilarating. But of course, over there in the distance is where you go through the final right-hander onto the one and only Mulsan straight. Now, we're gonna go and get the car and hopefully get out onto the, that's public road. So who's gonna stop us? So this is the stadium and obviously this road will not be open come the weekend and come for the practices but this is how you can get onto the public road also known as the Mulzahn Strait. Well, this is pretty cool. Right now, I'm standing literally at the end of the man-made, purpose-built racetrack known as Le Mans, before it takes off into the wild west of the public roads. Well, this, it's beautifully manicured. It's absolutely perfect. It's a real racetrack. Uh, and you, of course, made your way through those super fast S's. And right now, as you let the car run out wide, you're about to head on to the Mulsanne Strait, which is also known as the main road to Tours. And you can see it here. I mean, a lot more safety barriers here, very sadly, since Alan Simonson had his tragic accident just a very short few years ago when he hit that tree over there. A very tragic reminder of how vicious motorsport can be. Definitely not for the faint of heart. And when Alan hit the tree here, it was just the perfect storm. The barrier was too close to the tree. The barrier did not give way. He hit it at the perfect angle and very sadly perished in the Aston Martin. But right now they've tried to control it. They've made it a lot more severe to run over these channels. You can see how deep they are. You don't want to run your car out that wide, but really you're exploding with sort of energy as you come onto the main straight here. You really want to carry as much speed through that corner. So as you track out onto the straight, you can of course reach terminal velocity as fast as you can. Look how busy it is. And, and there's a very big difference in the road surface as you're about to see. Now with Will, they're, they're still getting Race track, changing surface, public highway. And boy, do you feel it. Le Terte Rouge is a wonderful restaurant, actually serving terribly crappy food, but the view's pretty good and it's jam packed. I once went there for the uh, Fox broadcast and they were the drunkest people I've ever found at Le Mans. <laughs> 